Hi everybody, this is Gijs again with another review and I hope you are doing super duper. Um, this time it is a tent review. It is about the Tentipi Safir 5CP. So if you are a couple or a family of four to five persons and looking for a new tent for the coming years, then you should definitely watch this video. Enjoy it. And welcome back to the review on the Tentipi Safir 5CP. For those of you who just tuned into my channel for the very first time, my name is Gijs. I am a Dutch uh, gear reviewer and most of the time it is outdoor related gear. Sometimes I test bikes and sometimes I do gadgets. Um, for example, the DJI drones that I use for my videos and also the DJI Pocket 2 that you will see somewhere in this video as well because it is a very handy, clever, smart device. I do my work totally independent, so that means that manufacturers are not paying me for my reviews. Um, I get the stuff for my reviews because most of the time I buy it, sometimes because I think, hey, this would be nice for my channel, and also sometimes because manufacturers just ask me if I would review their products. Now, in those cases, um, I always send the stuff back again, unless when I really, really like a product, um, then I just buy it from them, so I ask for a bill. Now, if you like my way of independent reviewing after that, you've seen this video, then please subscribe to my YouTube channel, because with more followers, I can make more videos easily. For those of you who know me already, um, you might have seen the review that I did a while ago on the 10TP Safir 7CP. And you might think, why is he doing a review on a 5CP? Because it is a quite similar tent. And yes, you're absolutely right. But when I launched the review on the 7CP, many of you asked me, how much bigger is it than a 5CP? Or when I did the video on the um, Olivin, the 10TP Olivin 2CP, you also ask me how small is that one in relation to the 5. So the 5 is that sort of in between tent and that's why I thought let's call Tentipi and ask for a tent to review. Now that was about two years ago so this one has been with me and my family uh, for about the last two years. Now you know why I wanted to do this review. And now let's start with what I always do. I start with the measurements that I do at home. Um, the first thing that I always measure is the weight of every single thing that is in the package that I get. And also, of course, the pack size, because that's important if you take it in a backpack. Well, this is not really something for a backpack, but though I did it. Um, the tent, as it is here, the length I measured it at 65 centimeters and it is 29 centimeters in diameter. Of course, this varies a little bit because of the way how you pack it or the way how Tentipi packs it, because the size that Tentipi gives is a little bit different. But that is another reason as well, because I measured the pack size with a floor packed in it. And this floor, you have to buy this as a optional extra because it's not standard uh, delivered with a Tentipi. Now this also means that the weight that I measure is a little bit different than the weight that Tentipi states. Uh, I measure this tent, the complete package, on my very precise calibrated scale at 11 kilograms and 330 grams. Now, one thing I really like about Tentip tents is the stuff bag that comes with the wet that they come in. Um, because they've got really good compression straps. And when you loosen them, you will see that there is this nice piece of fabric. And this really compresses the whole stuff bag very nicely together. The other thing is, is that the, comp the, the stuff bag itself, it is also rather large. And especially with the 5CP, uh, because I think that Tentipi makes one stuff bag basically for all their tents. Maybe not for the 50, that might be a bit bigger. Um, but this means that because it is so big, um, packing the tent and everything in it, it is so very easy. Even if you've got some mattresses that will fit in there as well. Of course, the inflatable mattresses. Now, this is the complete kit that you get when you buy a tent um, Now, what's in the stuff bag? It is, of course, the tent. It is a pole. It's a 
pouch with a lot of packs in there and a little plastic bag with some really nice clever things from Tantipi. Um, and of course the floor that I have as an extra. And the floor that I'm testing here, it is the Pro floor, which is the most expensive one, uh, but it's probably also the best one in this relation. One thing that is really nice about Tipi tents is the fact that they are very easy to pitch. Um, and well, the best way is just to demonstrate this to you. Uh, then I need to get everything out of the way because I need some space around me. And before I can pitch the tent, it's really nice. It's very soft moss uh, on, on, on the surface. It's dry at the moment because it's been dry in the Netherlands for quite some while already. Uh, but I need to clear it from branches and other stuff like those pine cones. They don't need to be on the floor. So let me do that first. Now I've cleared the space as best as I can. Um, of course there will be some pine cones somewhere but it's very soft so that will sink in. Um, I took from the little plastic bag a couple of items. The first one is the what I like to call Tentipi compass and the Tentipi compass is like a template that tells you where the center pole is which is of course where the hole is and where my finger is at the moment and the black lines indicate the direction where you should put the pegs. Now the compass has got one sort of designed area with it resembles uh, the entrance of the tent so you can decide immediately in what direction you want to have the opening of the tent. Now of course in this case it's facing the camera so it should be somewhere in that direction. The other thing that you need is this ribbon and one peg and let me demonstrate this. Now I've got the peg, put it in there and then I've got the ribbon and on the ribbon there is a loop. The loop goes around the peg and now at the point where I should place a peg for the CP5 there is a, where is it, there it is, there is a number 5 on the ribbon. Now this one is for uh, the 5, the 7, the 9 and the 15 so that's why it's a little bit longer. You can cut it if you like, I don't do this because it's not mine. Now all I have to do now is just place the compass in the ground ah. position the way where I would like to have the entrance which is going to be over there and all I have to do now is just take the pegs and put the pegs in the ground at the right distance. Now with all the pegs in place I leave the compass rose here but I can take away the ribbon. And the fact that I leave it here, I like it because when I pitch the tent itself, I know immediately where the middle of the tent is. Uh, and this is a nice indicator for that. So now let's pitch the tent, which is really an easy process. Now, get the tent and lose the compression strap. Get it out of the way and now I'll just need to roll out the tent and this is always if you pack your tent carefully you'll always know immediately how this works like so and the last one around a branch now what I like to do now is just open the door, take the pole and place it in the tent and just get it up. Open the big zipper. Don't you think that this looks just like a giant sorting hat from Harry Potter? Now let me get the pole. Now this pole it's an aluminum one. It is in five sections with elastic band in the middle. So it's easy 
to do this. But do this always gently and also when you pack the tent again, don't do this too hasty because if you damage the rim of the tube, then this doesn't slide in that easy anymore. Like so. And now I just take the pole. And when I look in the top of the head, I will find a sort of cup. And that's where the pole goes into. Fold the head over the top of the pole and get it in. And now I'll put it on the center. And now I know where it is. Now at the moment the tent is sort of pitched. It doesn't look really beautiful. But now you have to make a choice. Um, because if you are planning to use a floor, uh, Tentipi has got several different floors. And also in the aftermarket there are some floors available. And then you've got one sort of a problem and that's the center pole. Because some floors you need to get and slide it underneath the center pole. Now when I put tension on all the tensioners, then the pole will be pressed into the ground and I cannot get a... Um, is there a there's a fly in front of the lens, that's funny. Okay, when I tension all the tensioners, then I cannot lift the pole and get the floor underneath it. In Scandinavia, quite a lot of people use the tent like this, yes, tensioned and tidied up, but without a floor, because in that way you can make a very nice fire pit in it, or you can use a stove just on the ground itself. And about the stove, later of course more. Now, with the uh, tent TP floor that I have, it is a pro edition. Um, that means it has one main zipper and I can Tension, put tension on all the tensioners at the moment and then I can zip basically that floor underneath it. So let's tension all the tensioners and get it nice and tidy. But first I should remove the compass. Now first let me close the door. Now and when you put tension on the tensioners, don't pull them immediately in one go um, because what you pull here, the pole will go a little bit in this direction. So when you pull it on the other side, it will be, well, not nice. Gently. Let me repitch this one a little bit, like so. Now let's have a look if the pole is standing vertically. Spot on. Now, since I'm at it anyway, and I don't have the floor in it yet, um, let me get the door open. And I'll show you a little bit what it is like to be in the tent without the floor. Um, but now I have to get my P2. This is the Pocket 2 gimbal camera. I have a review on that on my website. And ever since I had this one, it makes my life so very, very easy. So let me put it on and let's enter the building. Now, this is what it looks like on the inside. And you can see it is quite spacious. Now, what you will see is that I've got the floor on the inside here. Um, and this is just because this is how I like the setup. But if I untie this, you see it goes like this. And then you can put this onto the outside and this is convenient if you are, for example, camping in snow. But I like to have it like this because now I can put my floor on here and you've got a nice seal against wind, rain and bugs. And now the magic of video. Let's get the floor in. Like I mentioned before, this is the 10TP Pro Floor. And it comes in a nice stuff back but it is a little bit on the I think small side put it next to the other one now let's roll it and get it in the tent and to be honest this is not that interesting so let's fast forward 
Now this is where the Pocket 2 that's shooting this image is at its best, shooting in different difficult places and angles. Um, what I want to show you here is how the floor is connected to the tent itself. It uses a toggle and a metal ring and you just connect the two of them together. And since this tent has got basically eight lines um, that are important for the pegs and the whole tent setup, um, I think that means it's octagonal. Um, you've got eight of these to do and I just have one to go. <laughs> now where the P2 comes in handy as well is that you can see now that that's where the pole is, the center of the pole and this is the main zipper. Now let me get the zipper done. Nah, like so. Now with the zipper in place or closed and the floor inside I can do some tidying up uh, because the floor is still very flubbly. I need to tension the floor and I need to tension this one as well also because I lose that one a little bit because I had to put another little bit of stick underneath the pole because it was sinking in the ground too much. Now the other tensioners that are here on the side they are there to pull the floor outwards basically so that there is a lot of nice tension on it. And also, like with these, just do this very, very gentle. And now I'm going the other direction. Now, I don't know if you notice this, but the light is getting different. The sun is almost gone. And that is because they predicted there would be a lot of Sahara sand passing the Netherlands today. It really looks a little bit spooky at the moment. Now, um, you see that the floor, I think, yes, it looks absolutely super. Now, before I move everything that I need for camping, including the stove, into the tent, let me talk you through a little bit of all the details. And let's start with the fabric that the Safir 5CP is made of. Um, this stuff it is called Cotpol Max, and Cotpol Max is a mix of cotton and polyester. The good thing about this is not only that it is very very strong, but it is also breathable, and that means that when you are in this tent, when it's cold weather, or when it's raining, or when it's warm weather, it has a very nice atmosphere. Um, cotton or cotton polyester tents are so much more comfortable than polyester or nylon tents that have a coating on the inside and in the outside that makes them waterproof but also totally non-breathable. And this fabric it's totally different and in the Netherlands we've got a long history of uh, producing tents with uh, polycotton or just cotton um, and from my knowledge also as a little kid I we've always spent time in these kind of tents. Uh, the cotton ones, not the polyester cotton ones, because these, those are from a later date, of course. Now, uh, the good thing is the fabric itself, it is treated against mold, it's treated against UV radiation, and it's got a DWR coating on the surface, so when a droplet of water hits the fabric, um, it will roll down the fabric very easily. And that has one big advantage, and that is that moisture is not getting into the fabric, into the cotton fibers, basically, that fast. But if it happens, what happens also is that the cotton fibers, they swell up a little bit um, and that means that they get close to fabric even more. So um, yes, this is 100% waterproof. Sometimes you do have to do some maintenance when you spend a lot of time outdoors in foul weather, for example, then you need to re-impregnate um, the outer material, but that's also quite easy to do. Now, that was the yellow stuff. Let's talk about the green stuff. Um, the skirt is made out of polyester with on the inside a polyurethane coating. Um, this is a very sensible and clever choice because the polyester with the U PU coating does not absorb moisture in any way. And since this fabric touches the ground all the time, no moisture will creep up into the fabric. And that means that this stays dry. Also, when you're camping in wintertime with the snow, um, this is an ideal way of making a sort of, well, let's say, I can't show you this really, but 
you can extend this a little bit. You can bury this skirt into the snow, making a very nice weather tight seal. That is about the fabric itself. Now let's have a look at some other small details and let's start with the guy lines or the storm lines. Now the Tentipi Safi 5 has got five guy lines and they're of course positioned on the seams that connect to the pegs because this is the strongest position. Um, also I should say that I have ever hardly ever used them because a tipi tent it is really a very windproof and weatherproof concept. Um, so I've not been using them a lot only, I think about once when it was really hard blowing on the coast. Uh, but it's like, it's in a nice garage, a piece of elastic band with a toggle. Um, and it's quite simple and easy to use them. Of course you can lengthen, lengthen, lengthen them uh, with this plastic thingy. Yes, they are reflective, which is of course a very good thing. And um, one tip, what I didn't do apparently when I did this the last time is don't put them back like I did previously but put them back with the plastic thingy on the end and then don't start at this side but start at this side because if you start at this side you will get the wire into a sort of curl and you will end up with one big curl here and that doesn't work so start over here put your hand and just do it like so and like now, you will see that there is no curly thingy whatsoever. And then you can put it back into its storage system or garage. Now, the next thing that we should talk about is, I think, ventilation. Now, the Tentipi Safi 5 has got three ventilation openings in the skirt of the tent. Um, like so, this is the closed position. There are pieces of Velcro. Um, so that when you have foul weather you close them or when it's cold of course. Now when you open them up you will see that there is mesh behind it to prevent bugs from getting into the tent. And then it's just a matter of using these pegs, those hooky ones, to open it up. That's one. And multiply this by three. Up. And the last one. And now let me show you how this looks on the inside. And this is where the P2 comes in handy again. Because now I can show you the opening on the inside. It's one big window and there's of course three of them. And it's quite easy to close them. And I can do this from basically two ways because it's a two-way zipper if I want to open it for the half but I'm keeping it open because the good thing about having three of those ventilation uh, openings on the bottom part of the tent is that you get a really nice airflow if you've got some place for the wind and the fresh air to go to and that is needed of course if you want to make a campfire in the tent if you're not using the floor or when you're having a stove in the tent but that air, or the smoke, needs to go up. Well, the Tentipi has a chimney, which is also a opening for the ventilation of the tent itself. So let's move up. And now this is where the shooting gets a little bit tougher, because um, if you look at the top of the tent, you will see that it's closed at the moment. But you might also see that there are a lot of wires here and all these wires they accumulate what a beautiful word this is into this sleeve and the sleeve goes all the way down 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 to this point and on this point you will see one two three four five six toggles and i can pull them and if i pull one of those toggles a part of the ventilation system in the top will open and now i can do some sort of a concert
This whole system by pulling the strings only works because of this. Because Tantipi put elastic cords on the outside of the chimney. So when I pull something from the inside, it goes that way. But because it's got resistance that when I loosen the contraption, it will pull down immediately. And now we're on this spot. Do you see this? This lumpy part. That is the place where the chimney needs to go. So now it's time to get everything inside my tent to make me ready for the night. Surprise! Now with everything in my tent, it is time to talk about some measurements that I did. Um, the tent, at its largest width, I measured somewhere between 3 meters and 35 centimeters. That is basically between the flat parts that are opposing each other and 350 centimeters at the point where they make their corners. So that's the largest um, distance that I could find. Now, Tantipi promises a width of 380 centimeters. So somewhere I am losing 30 centimeters. And if you take a ring of 30 centimeters around the whole tent, that is quite a lot. Now I've measured this um, with the floor in the tent like it is pitched now, but also with out the floor. It might be a little bit bigger in that respect, but it just not. It's not. I just measured 350 centimeters maximum. Now then the height. Um, in the top I measured a height on the interior on 206 centimeters. The height that is really usable is 1 meter and 67 centimeters. Now I am 1 meter and 69 centimeters tall and for me it is quite possible to stand sort of upright and dress or undress myself. It, it doesn't feel that uncomfortable. Now with a family of four, my wife, she's a little bit smaller than I am, uh, one daughter of 16 that's actually the same size as I am and one daughter that's a little bit uh, smaller than we all are. So we are a family of four and we've been camping in this tent. Now what I should point out now, it looks very spacious probably on the cameras that I'm shooting this in because there is one GoPro over there which is shooting in the super wide angle. There is my iPhone which is shooting at the 0 0.5 angle and there is the P2 in the middle that is shooting at its normal wide angle. I don't know exactly what it is at the moment. And there's one camera, a GH5, recording this bit. Quite a setup. Now, it looks really big, but actually this tent is not that big. Because over here I've got one mattress. You can see it. It's a thumb rest. It is, I think, 50 centimeters at its widest point and it is one meter and 80 centimeters long. Well, this fits quite neatly. But over there, there is a mattress. It is a very nice expat. Um, and that one is 50 centimeters width as well. Uh, it's 190 centimeters long. But I also tried this tent with an odd mattress, which was a lowland, which was 60 centimeters wide and one meter and 90 centimeters long. Now, if you want to fit five people in this tent sleeping, then you need to have five of these Thermarest more mummy tapered models because those squarey ones, they just don't fit. Now for us as a family of four, um, we've got mixed mattresses, whatever we have lying, laying around. So we always manage to squeeze the four of us in here. But as I say, squeezed because it is quite a tight fit especially when you're having this very big Tantipi Eltfell stove in it and that's what Tipi K 
camping is of course all about and especially with a 10 tp it's about going out on days that it's also not that nice or really nice weather but extremely cold then you've got this stove and it will heat everything up now we as a family we've been thinking about this 5 cp a lot and um, the main question was do we think it's big enough for a family of four and the answer is yes and no because my kids they know how to play with fire they know that the stove is hot so when we are camping with this tent the four of us we like it we play games in the evening um, we're comfortable with the stove being red hot somewhere in the tent and us just sitting around and sleeping around but if you are a family with small children then i think you will find it a little bit less comfortable what i would advise you to do is that if you like this concept of the tp 5c or the 10 tp um, safi 5cp then if you want this one or you want a stove maybe you should look for a smaller one there are different brands that make similar stoves but just smaller in size but what you also can do is just buy a fence around it and you don't find it at um, tent stores but you find this at a place where they sell pet stuff because for dogs and kittens they've got these nice squarey boxes made out of a metal wiry frame um, and that will protect the stove or it will protect and prevent your kids from touching the stove by accident now um, if you are just a couple, yes, then the Safi 5CP is big enough. Because when I am out with my wife, what we normally do is we put the mattresses on one side of the stove and we take the camping chairs. These are the Halinox chair ones and we've got a chair one table as well. Then we take those and put them on the other side of the stove. So you have the warmth, you can put the table in the middle, you can play card games, drink a little whiskey, um, and that's how we do it. One thing that you should be aware of, that if you're camping on soft ground like I am at the moment, then put some protection on the feet, of the, on the legs of the um, chairs, whatever chair you have. But if they are these tiny ones, they will punch through the fabric of the floor and that is a pity. Um, so I've reviewed these, they are the chair buddies and they divide the weight a little bit better. Now let me get a cup of my tea that I made in between and I can put it on the stove because it's not on at the moment. I'm not risking that when I'm doing this kind of stuff as a printed presentation. Now just a few other things that you might see now is that I'm using a cowhide on the floor and underneath the stove. I do this because a cowhide in the first place it's warm it's very very strong and if you get sparks falling out of the stove when you put wood in um, they fall onto the cowhide and it maybe smells a little bit but nothing really happens you can also buy a special fire blanket to put underneath um, the stove uh, Winnowell has them for example I'll put the link in the description below in the description below many more links on stuff that you will see in this picture with the links to the videos and stuff and also to some things that you might want to buy um, but I think that the cowhide it just looks also very good and it's nice when it's winter time it's sort of cozy and warm and it gives a nice look and feel to the tent the other thing that I did not mention yet is that the, you've seen the system that I use to pull open the ventilation and you will see that now it is attached to the back and um, the tent it's got a lot of different of these metal rings again these metal rings are there also to attach a inner tent to uh, the 5 cp because it is possible but i never do this because then the tent only gets smaller i've also tested the Safir uh, 7 cp i didn't use a inner tent in that one as well because i don't think it's just it's just not necessary now but again back to that one um, it's connected to one of those rings why because if i would put it on here um, the stove it might get too hot but there is a little cup and I'll show you this there is a cup so when you pitch the tent you place this cup under the uh, end of the pole and it's just there and you can use the uh, controls from 
down here, up to there. But because the stove is there and I'm going to use it tonight, let me do it like so. What I did not show you when I was using those is that in the top of the tent there is also a piece of mesh. Um, I've tied it together now because when you use the stove and the chimney it might get hot. Um, I've tried it to close it as well but it's just not a very nice fit. But when you don't use the stove for example in summertime in mosquito infested Sweden then you can close that mesh and then you have every protection from um, bugs getting in and you can open the ventilation totally. Now let me get all the camera equipment out of the way because there are a couple of things that I forgot to show you earlier and that I need to do outside the tent. Now with all the cameras out of the way again um, let me show you a few things that I forgot or that I did not mention in the beginning because for me the pitching of A10TP is <laughs> second nature by now. Now let me talk you through a little bit of the packs itself. The first pack I use is this very solid steel one. It's got nice ribbles so it's got a lot of grip into any sort of soil that you use it in. Um, you get enough for the whole tent and two extra I believe to use on some of the uh, storm lines if you need them. The real storm packs are these triangular shaped ones. They're out of aluminium, aluminium. Um, and you see them very much in lightweight tents um, and they are very uh, solid as well. Now the third pack, the hook pack, I showed you that one already, that's for the ventilation openings. Now what you also get when you buy the 10 TP is uh, some repair cloth just in case. With the floor you also get a piece of repair cloth but that's probably somewhere at home. But one important thing that I failed to show you is basically this little thingy. Um, inside, and I think this is absolutely clever design, there is a, well, how do you call this, a scroll. This is the quick setup guide that TNTP makes. And in this way, it is so very easy to, let me turn it the other way around. Oh. In this way, it is so very easy just to learn how to pitch a 10 TP tent. And for all their tents, this is the same manual. There's also an instruction, of course, on their website. But I think that if you rewind my video once or twice, that you will get the idea as well. Now, let me get rid of this. Now, the other thing that I did not show you yet is about the floor. And that's quite important because it has got a a lot of zippers in between so you can find a way to use this floor together with a stove with a open fire or just like this um, as a full thing to cover the whole ground and this really makes a, a big difference in condensation so if you use the 10 tp in wet circumstances then use a floor now what i always like to do is just to zip this one open and just put it a little bit underneath the cowhide because this is where the, his legs or her legs are. Um, so I can do this and then just fold it underneath that part and underneath this part. And now I've got a sort of triangle that I can use when I can sit in the tent but keep my feet here. Or take my shoes off when I need to. One last thing, and that is about the entrance. Because what you will see now is that um, above me, the clear sky, a lot of desert sand because the clouds are really, or it's really getting darkish. But if it rains or drizzles, then, you know, the doors open, this will get wet. And that's the other clever thing about getting the ground sheet uh, or the floor out of the way. Now it doesn't really matter. But Tantipi has made a special awning for the, the Saphir series. And every Saphir has a different size awning. But you attach it to the Velcro piece that is over here. There's Velcro underneath it and you can attach it. And then it goes over 
the entrance you've got a couple of poles and some guy lines extra and some pegs of course and then your entrance is shielded against rain and also it's nice to sit under it when you're having a cold night well for the 5 cp i don't have this awning i have it for a 2 cp and it works wonderfully well last but not least now the tent is open now i can close the door of course and then you will see some nice features on the door as well um, you've seen me already tie down with a toggle very simple system um, and like so I can close the door tie this as well now what I like about the door it's a very good uh, YKK zipper of course the zipper has got a cover so no rain will get through it um, and you have a hook or a um, loop here so you can tie it down with a peg there are many more loops on the whole tent if you want to tie the tent down to the ground now um, to open it i can do it from this way or if i might want to have some ventilation i can also or just look from the inside to the outside i can open it from the top so now it's open in this way Close it again and you see that the zipper it is nicely hidden under the triangle so that no water that will drip from this gets into the zipper itself. But there is a second zipper and this is a zipper that is quite important if you travel to Scandinavia. Because, and I'll stay, make a step back, you'll see that there is one big mesh door. And in this way when it's a hot whoa sometimes this is a little bit tight let me concentrate now in this way when it is a hot summer evening open the ventilation here open all the side ventilation with the mesh behind it open all the top fence with the mesh behind it and you're perfectly shielded from scandinavian midgets with the door open again, I think I have covered everything that you need to know about the Tentipi Savir 5CP. So it's time to head on to my verdict. How do I rate the Tentipi Savir 5CP? Now, to be totally honest, this is not only my verdict, because we as a family of four have been discussing this tent intensively. Because we've got a sort of ambiguous feeling about it. What we do like is the fact that it is made out of this polyester cotton mix because that gives a very nice atmosphere inside the tent no matter if it's raining, cold or warm weather. What we also do like is the fact that when it's cold or rainy that we can put a stove in there and heat the tent up in the night and sometimes in the daytime because that is really cozy and do some games inside. The pitching it's easy Tentipi uses high quality materials, there is absolutely nothing wrong with this tent. Except maybe the space. Because when I started testing this one, you asked me the question, should I buy a 7CP or should I buy a 5CP? Well, as a family, we think that for us, this tent is on the small side. We know how to operate and work around a hot stove. But if you are a family of four with little children, um, be sure that you put some fence around the stove because the tent is a little bit too small, basically. If you don't use the stove, the tent is absolutely fine. If you're a couple, no problem whatsoever. You can even sit inside with a little table and two chairs. Now, if you are in doubt in buying a 7CP or a 5CP, our advice is always go for the 7CP. Yes, it is a bit more expensive, it is a bit bigger in pack size, and it is a bit heavier. But to our opinion, um, the 7CP feels so much bigger and has so much more space that it is absolutely worth the extra money. Let's talk about prices. Um, the Tentipi Savi 5CP retails for 1750 euros. The Pro Floor that I'm testing here retails for 430 euros. And I think that's quite expensive because for that kind of money you can buy a small three-person tent. 
Um, then the Altfjell stove. And I will be doing a full review on that stove later. Um, that one retails for a whopping 900 euros. Now, and if you add this all up together, then the tent TP is quite a expensive tent that feels to us a little bit on the smallish side. And therefore I rate the tent TP Safir 5CP at 8.8 .8 points out of 10 total. I really hope you liked this video and if you did then please give it a like and leave a comment below. And also if you've got any questions, suggestions or remarks please use the comment section because that's what it's for and I'm more than happy to answer everything that you can throw at me. Now if you really like this video then hit the subscribe button because with more followers I can make more videos. If you're not totally convinced yet then please have a look at my outdoor gear favorite playlist up there and also in the description below and many more useful links in the description um, and if you've seen those then please subscribe to my channel anyway thank you so much in advance if you do now for this moment i would like to say thank you for watching i hope to see you the next time and you know enjoy the outdoors and stay safe ciao ciao and what you might see is that this is a totally different backdrop than the video or the footage or the post that I did on Instagram last week. Because when I was shooting that video, somebody was pitching a tent in that corner and I didn't see it. And when I got home and I looked at the footage, I saw one yellow bag moving around the whole time and I could not get rid of this. So I found a different spot and I think this one is even more beautiful. Thank you so much again for watching. Bye.